was popping. Howdy everyone. Hello, hello, hello. I'm here to talk about the new online game, the Warner Brothers Multiverses. Now, I talked about it a little while ago, character predictions, things like that, you know, normal YouTuber stuff. But I'm here to actually say that I originally had no intention of playing this game whatsoever. Nick All-Star Brawl is kind of underwhelming, not much of a hot take, very disappointing. But this new game, this is the one. I, I was very, very delightfully surprised by this game. I love how, first off, it's free. Like, that's amazing. That, that, that can get a lot of people into this. Uh, a seven figure amount of people to be exact and a lot of it adds a lot of competitive aspects and I really even though it's small I really like the character selection uh, I love a lot of the, how everything is unique and very them like I also like that they're very internet aware it's funny they know how to get people's attention LeBron does the meme first off LeBron in itself being in this game is a meme but then they they add the meme within a meme there you go that's internet humor right there that'll get a lot of people talking also for some reason Shaggy could go ultra instinct and I love it I remember when that was a meme a few years ago and it was awesome I like how many extensive modes there are even though it's only in a beta and most of them work relatively well and I really like it. The local play is a little bit disappointing in the lack of options but it's still alright. The one thing that surprised me the absolute most about this game is that it somehow made duos fun. How did they do that? I mean I have a few theories that just uh, I you know me I'm smash guy love playing smash brothers but the duos and team aspect is just not fun to me. I've always hated it. I don't like it. But here, oh, they add actual like good mechanics for it to work well. Like instead of you having a few stocks each, you instead share stocks and that's genius. That's, that's a way to keep playing and make people get better so you don't get yelled at if you die all four times, you know? Also love how they have perk items to help out your team member and your most majority of the time your special also gives buffs to your team member which is pretty cool. It's very smart. It keeps a lot of people playing along with a battle pass that works functionally gives you an award every tier which most battle passes don't do that anymore and I'm very grateful. I can level up as much as I want without paying and I could still get even though they're not as cool rewards, there's still rewards nonetheless to keep people playing. Along with getting a lot of gold after you win, which is more incentive. I love that you get rewarded for playing in teams and stuff to actually like, you know, try the main mechanic of their game instead of going 1v1s like stupid people. Again, I love all of the characters that they've added so far. I'm they also are doing like the smash thing, like pretty obscure characters I wouldn't think about adding to the game, but work, and it's great. Like, they added Harley Quinn before anyone else and she's busted, bro. Like the Tasmanian devil over someone like Elmer Fudd or Daffy Duck, but it still works. That's awesome. Keep up the good work. Also love that they have the budget to have returning voice cast come back, like Estella's Garnet. Wasn't expecting that at all. They got Kevin Conroy to come out of retirement. That was cool. John DiMaggio to come back as uh, Jake the dog. That was pretty cool. One of the more iconic voices in a lot of shows. Just all that attention to detail goes a long way. And I love how much love they show for each show. They have lots of representation, especially Steven Universe and Adventure Time stuff. It's all over the place. Also a lot of Scooby-Doo stuff. Like for some reason they have like this thing where you have to pay like 50,000 gold to get a Fred icon. Why, why would somebody do that? But it's still funny in my opinion that they would go out of their way to do that. I like the leveling up system. I like that for each character it has like their own tiers that you don't have to pay for. That you, can, that you just get for leveling them up. Which is also a good way to keep people playing. It's just great that they think of all these things that Nick All-Star Brawl or Brawlhalla has not. I'm throwing shade to both, I don't care. And the thing about this is that 
uh, going back to Smash, by the time, like, Sora came out, I was already so done with Smash. I was so bored of it. I needed something new other than just characters. I needed something to come out of the ground and save this franchise that needed a lot of help recently. And this has done it. It's nice and refreshing. And it's honestly a game that's come out this year that I actually enjoy. I've only enjoyed like a few games that have come out this year. The rest have just been disappointments or just didn't meet my expectations or were just buggy or whatever. I don't know. Like this and Kirby, like that. Those, that's my stuff right there. Put. You can tell that they're given a budget to actually do what they want. And I love that Warner Brothers is giving first player, I think it's called first player something. I can't remember the name of the company right now. But they've given them a lot of liberty. They've given them a lot of things to do. Lots of area to move around and be able to fix and patch things. And it's a relatively small team, which is pretty cool as well. The only thing that makes me a little bit worried is that if they will be able to do consistent updates and keep it relevant. Like, I already know they're adding Rick and Morty as separate characters in August at some point. I've seen gameplay of Rick. He looks really cool and looks a lot of fun. I'll be, I'll have to try him out once he releases. They need to be able to make it come out. It has to be a constant push in order to compete because Smash has died out now, but that does not mean they have to slack off. Like, I would say, like, once the battle pass starts, make it last, like, maybe a month and a half, two months. And then when that next battle pass starts, you have to probably add another character along with that. I know that's probably the plan, but I feel like that's what you have to do in order to keep people playing. That's another thing that I feel like Fortnite kind of struggles with, with their battle pass. Because yeah, they have tons of skins and emotes and stuff, but sometimes that's just not enough, you know? You need to add something completely new, which they do sometimes, and I commend them for. But that, that doesn't always change, you know? Now they're just resorting to doing lots of brand deals like Naruto and Ch John Cena. <laughs> needs to be able to keep up along with other free-to-play games. Like, once the full thing releases, it can't just die like Halo Infinite did. Like, I will admit, I love the fast-paced multiplayer of Halo. But that campaign is just not it. It's not for me. I know some people liked it. I didn't. It's not for me. Open world Halo. Um, open world sandbox Halo. I don't feel like that was the right direction to go in. Again, some people like it. I just didn't. Another thing is that it's cool that they added original characters, but I feel like they need to start adding more obscure stuff. Like, of course, they need to add, like, the goddess. Like, you gotta add something for, like, Matrix or, like, Lord of the Rings. Samurai Jack would probably be a good fit. But I want something crazy. I want something stupid, alright? I want some version of the piranha plant to come into the game. I know they already did that with LeBron. But I need something crazier, all right? I'm, actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, maybe something that they come up with won't be as crazy as LeBron, but I, I that's their challenge. They're gonna do it. I believe in them. I also like how, going back, I know I'm jumping around a lot, I'm sorry. I'm doing this straight off the dome because I've been playing, I've already played like 20 hours in this game. <laughs> there, I like how the tiers aren't super extremely long. Like again, going back to Fortnite, most of the time their tiers go up to 100 plus. I love that it's just to 15. Like it makes it easy enough for anybody to get the awards and it doesn't feel like they're ripping you off. Speaking of that, the Gleanium is a little bit of a problem. It does fall into that transaction trope of making you have to pay for a little bit more than you need just to get a fancy new costume or an emote or banner or whatever. It's just kind of stupid. That's why I don't really spend money on that thing because I feel like it, I know eventually I'm going to fall out the game. I don't know if it'll be soon or not. I'll eventually fall out the game and I'll be like, wow, I regret spending all of that money. Overall, I think that they're doing a great job with what they've been given 
and they're gonna the there's a lot a lot of potential here and i believe that they'll be able to execute on it it won't fall off gosh i hope that doesn't age terribly but again i believe in them they can do it they can keep the game relevant and that they'll be able to push the boundaries of 2d platformers like i feel like it won't be as popular as smash but i feel like it'll live in that between range of Brawlhalla and Smash, like at that number two spot, that it would be played competitively. They already banned Iron Giant, that's hilarious. But it would be played competitively, a lot of people will get into it. Like I said, there's already a seven figure number of players playing this right now, and that's huge. That is a huge jump, and I hope that they'll be able to contain it, fix out all the, take out all the bugs by the time the official game releases. So yeah, that's all my thoughts. What do you think about a Warner Brothers multiverses down below? Tell me about it. I want to hear your opinions. Tell me uh, how wrong I am if you want to. Alright, uh, that's all I got. Until next time, friends.